Hello, welcome to the Randy Steffes Show. And uh, this is episode I don't know, because episode four, you know, the camera stopped working. But step number one today is going to be Thank the Cameraman, Johnny Arkansas. All right. Thank you, Johnny. Glad to be back. And uh, step number two, what are we going to do? We're going to continue restoring this Kramer Pacer. And I'm going to make it shine. That's About what year is that thing? 80s? It's, it's 84. 1984. I think it's 84. Someone can tell me different in the comments section below. Ha, 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 ha. It's a good year. But anyways, what's happened so far, just to recap a couple of episodes, uh, is the trim's out, strings are off. I kind of wiped it down a little bit, got some of the dirt off, and I did a little bit of fret polishing, but it's not good enough yet. Which brings us to, you know, a question that Johnny asked in episode number three mm. about that Gibson uh, guitar that you have. You were like, what is fretwork? Ah. What is fretwork? Huh. I'm like, fretwork is, you know, working on the frets, but, you know, frets get all kinds of problems. These, these ones have some really minor problems. They're not quite as shiny as I want them yet. I want them to be mirror, 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 shiny, shiny, super slick like glass. They're gonna play great and amazing. They're pretty shiny. But we're gonna get some close-ups here now. All right. And Let's have a look. it does have some super minor divots in in the frets. Let's see if we can see if you can get the super what? minor divots in the frets there. And if you get really close, they don't look all shiny like mirrors. You can see all kinds of gunk still going on, right? Yeah. You know, because I just, you know, did the, I did a lot of rubbing. I did a lot of back and forth, but they still need a lot of, a lot of effort. Yeah, you got a couple of divots up here. Uh -huh. I'm not, oh, yeah. not, I'm not actually going to worry too much about the divots. I'm not going to like restore it to like it's brand new in a shop. I'm going to respect the age on this guitar in a lot of ways. And I just can't do like fret leveling here. I don't have a vice. I don't really have fret leveling files. Yeah. I want that stuff clamped down. You know, like this is the point. Look at that. You know, like it, Jake E. Lee has been into this thing. Yeah, totally. Right? <laughs> but, yeah. but uh, you know, I'm going to clean the heck out of it. I'm not going to worry about this little bit of playing wear in here. A lot, a lot of it, not all of it's going to come off as I continue to polish these until I get them like super mirror shiny like I want them. So if you're going to, you know, get your frets leveled, yeah. you got to take them to somebody, but right? There's another get thing going gear. on here, which is the dreaded fret sprout. What is that? The dreaded fret sprout is, is like the wood shrunk because we live here and the frets are popping out the ends. And so if I feel down the side of that thing, it's, it's not very nice. It's all sharp. You should feel it, Johnny. Check it uh, out. Let's see. You should check that out. Does that feel yeah, nice to play I on? Do, I do feel that. That could get hung up on, say, like my nice cotton shirt, gigging I just shirt. Take the popsicle stick, it just starts carving into it. That little wood chip's going on there. So we're going to fix the fret sprout part. That's what we're going to do. And I'm going to take the neck all the way off before I even do that because it's just going to be easier. I'm not going to have any chance of putting extra dings in the body. And I'm going to take all this hardware off and actually polish out this headstock a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy on it, but I'm going to, I'm going to clean it up so it's nice and shiny and it's super gross. You're going to so take the knobs I'm off? I'm taking everything off this oh, thing. Right, man. The knobs are going to stay for now because I'm just going to get the parts off the neck and put the body away. Are those the pickups that came with it? That's the pickup that came in this guitar. Oh, that's the OG pickup. That's a Schaller humbucker. Alright. Cool. Absolutely. I don't think anybody may, I don't think I've been inside the control cavity of this thing ever. This is a fun this bunch of episodes because you're totally de deconstructing a guitar. That's fun. We're taking this thing all apart. Just holding it like that so you can see it. But I'm just gonna hold it like this. Yeah. You, you, I can work on it. You're just taking out the four screws right on the back. It's pretty simple, yeah. Should you always use a hand tool or sometimes you can use a power drill? I don't it like using matter. the power drills. I really don't like using the power drills. Because if I fuck up with the power drill, it's much worse than if I fuck up with the hand yeah. tool. <laughs> 
That's my problem with power tools. Inquiring oh. minds, though, you know, yeah, yeah. want to know. Inquiring minds, do you want to know? Why do you spend all this extra time? Well, I'm not working in the shop. I'm working on my guitar. I'm restoring my guitar. I don't have to worry about the rent or the customer wants it back. It doesn't really matter. It's a general thought in Arkansas that uh, if you have off. a power tool, though, it's better. And when it it's comes a, off, we can take, put that down. See, it's, there's some shims in there. <coughs> Hmm. Someone shimmed up that neck a little bit. Probably trying to get a little more action out of that tr truss rod. And I think we were talking about this on the mean mistreater, right? This is what you had to do inside there a little bit. I, I did. I shimmed the heck yeah. out of the mean mistreater. Also did a lot of fret polishing on the mean mistreater. And also didn't bother to fix the little bit of playing wear and divots that were on the mistreater. What are you doing now? Just getting the screws? I'm just like, these uh, kind of yeah, seem yeah. to want to stay in place. They want to thread a little bit. And I'm just going to put the body away so we don't fuck it up. That's what I'm going to do. Are you so, going to wrap it in bubble wrap? No, no. For now, I'm going to put it in the stand. <laughs> and then later, I'm going to put it in a gig bag until I'm ready for it again. Just put it away. It's going to be easier to do a little bit of... Again, I'm not going to go crazy, but I'm going to take out maybe a little tiny bit of polishing compound and just really clean all this thing good everywhere. There's going to be an upcoming episode where I take the Floyd Rose completely apart. Absolutely. And again, just to aid me in doing what I want to do, I'm taking this thing in. I'm going to keep this little bit of shim in my parts case there. Well, this is a smart idea. I like the parts case a lot. It's you get yourself a little case. The parts from this yeah, guitar. that's smart. Yeah. Yet again. I got this wrench out earlier to do this. What are you doing exactly? I'm going to take the nut off. I'm going to take the nut off. I'm going to take all the tuners off. And we're gonna clean it all. <laughs> Man, when was the last time this guy got a cleaning like this? This guitar's never had a cleaning. Never in like its this. life. Never in its life has it had a cleaning like this. This is a pretty extensive cleaning. Not since you bought it from Lee Rittenhauer? I bought this from a guy <laughs> who I used to have a website about vintage Kramers. So it's got very good lineage. I'm sure we've been through this, but for those of you just tuning in, how many Kramers would you say you had? There, there's uh, quite a few. There's also a little bit of a shim in there. Not unusual. Doesn't seem to want to go anywhere, so I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to put this guy back together the way it's supposed to go back together. Ladies and gentlemen at home, the only Kramer he doesn't own is the Beretta with the snake with human teeth on it. So we're going to try to start a GoFundMe so Randy can get that one. I don't think we're doing it's that. It's the only one. That That's a have. new Kramer Beretta. So those of you at home. Legit <laughs> Sambo model Beretta. <laughs> those of you at home. We're making a comeback. That want to help Randy out. That's the one Kramer he doesn't have. It's R5 Floyd Rose Nut. R5 is pretty wide, one of the widest ones. The widest one, maybe some people might say. It's very wide string spacing. Makes this very classical guitar-like to play. I'm gonna need to find the right wrench. Should have found that before. How's that? That's way too big. Maybe that one. Difficult, difficult. This might be a bit of a hold up here on the find the right wrench to undo these guys. This episode brought to you by the good people at Snap On Tools. Find the wrench. Find Snap On Tools. Maybe I got the socket for the job. They'll even bring Snap On has a lifetime. Guarantee, and I think they'll come to your house in a yeah. truck. Here's the socket for the job. What's about what size is that? 
What's working here? I don't know. 10 millimeter maybe is what it is. Okay. I don't even need to find a driver. This is enough. Pretty impressive that you can pick that out of that sack of <laughs> sockets so quickly. Too. That's like a special gift. The real important thing about the parts dryer is that it doesn't drop on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Right, because that would negate its its use. And my whole theory of uh, same screw is going to go in the same hole. So I have a particular way I'm putting these away in the parts drawer. Which is one of the things I find most fascinating about how you work on guitars. Because I, I don't think it really matters. Because I'll just throw my shit guitar. anywhere, man. You'll just throw shit anywhere. Yeah, and then if I lose it, then I'll just uh, grab, uh, cannibalize it off of something else. Yeah, well. That maybe doesn't even fit. That, you could do that, you I know, guess. Why wouldn't but you? But that's why, you know, that's why you have a guitar repair program and I don't. All right. That one's going there. Continuing on. And what are these things called? Tuning pegs? Yep. Removing that screw. Why am I taking these off? I'm gonna clean these a bunch too, and it's just gonna be easier. Like, what are you gonna do to soak them in like some gasoline? I don't think I'm gonna soak them in gasoline. <laughs> Kerosene. Or I think I am gonna go totally nuts and use this stuff called Never Dull. Oh, what's that? It's like for polishing chrome and stuff. Oh. Polishing chrome. I've used it to polish cymbals. I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> You're a drummer. Why would why would I polish cymbals? <laughs> that, why, th that takes the sound off of them, Randy. That makes them sound worse. That makes them sound like you don't. Yeah. Is that like the people like me that like old strings? You know, like new strings don't sound good. Yeah, I don't know. I digress. How often this should is, you change your string? This is not a drum show. <laughs> but we will bring that up about why you don't do that why don't <laughs> to your cymbals. <laughs> we'll have a whole episode about that. we we'll have a whole episode about that. Indeed, he do. I was hoping we were going to do a Beretta. We'll get to the Berettas. Episode. I got four of them, I think, and most of them need work. And one of them I play all the time, and it's one of my favorite guitars ever. And I'm gonna have to do that Beretta. We'll just do like a string changing on that one. I got some extra special strings I like to put on that one. Ooh. It'll be like almost a product endorsement. Making sure I'm keeping my screws straight. You're gonna do that Beretta last so that I'll keep coming back to film, right? Because you know I'm gonna hang out on these episodes. You too. like all the Kramers, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah, but you know, soft spot. Soft spot for the Beretta. Soft spot for the Beretta. We should bring the old clear. Actually, that, that's gonna be a quick episode too. There's that one Beretta that you really like where the only problem is it's just missing like one bolt. Oh, right, the black one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. that would be, yeah, the black one. That Beretta. That one deserves to get fixed and played too. Maybe I'll lend it to you for a while. All right, well then I gotta let you borrow the clear one. <laughs> no, I, I, you can't bring any more guitars into this case. <laughs> Not even a Beretta with a snake with human teeth? Well, well, you make exception for that. Actually, I want the other pro model more of the, of the new Kramers. The other one is like unbelievably cool. I fucking love it. I forget whose pro model it is, but it's like a V shape, but it's a set neck. Mm. Now, if this guitar was a set neck, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now. What does that mean? What's a set neck, the, Randy? The neck's glued in. Uh oh. There's our first dropping parts on the floor. Well, that's going to happen. swept the floor before I did this and by that I mean like I uh, threw my foot around a little bit. What's a set neck? Set neck. Glued in neck, bolt on neck. Oh. I unbolted it. And you prefer the set neck Berettas? 
Do the bolt-on Berettas or? or I, don't, I don't think they, there are any set neck Berettas. I think they're oh, all bolt-on Berettas. Really? But I got a neck through Kramer Stage Master. I don't know what that, a Stage Master is. It's like a Beretta on steroids. Ooh. The guitar I'm talking about that I have. Well, I'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We should bring old the clear one in here for you to mess around with sometime. I'm sure there's something wrong with it. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. Or we just change the strings on it. I want to do lots of just we're gonna change the strings. I mean, it's uh people need to see string changing videos. Is my belief. It's owned by me, it's so I'm important. fairly sure there's something drastically wrong with it. <laughs> Who knows? Probably there's one pickup on there not even working. I wouldn't even notice. Indeed, indeed, do. <laughs> yes, indeed, do. But the cool thing with the clear one, Randy, though, is you can you can diagnose it probably without having to take it apart. So there we have it. We're all the way down to here. All right. What are we gonna do next? <clears throat> I'm gonna put some uh, masking tape down. What do you call that little truss rod plate thing you took off? Is that what that's called? A truss rod cover? Is that what it's called? I think I most people would call it a truss rod cover. Okay. I, I did good there. what people would call it, truss rod right. cover. These are the things people want to know. People want to know. When they watch what do you video. call that? What do you call that? A truss rod cover. And that's just your run-of-the-mill Home Depot masking tape you got there? This is my run-of-the-mill Home Depot masking tape. So if someone tries to sell you some shit, you know, at a music store, special tape for this, don't buy it. Just go to the local. Actually, I went today to get this masking tape because I was looking for my masking tape and I couldn't find it. Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe I could probably do this job without masking it off, but just because I screw up so much, I'm just going to take the time to mask it. Why are you masking taping the guitar? Well, I'm going to get rid of that fret sprout. That's what I'm doing. Oh, the fret sprout. Uh -huh. Because you don't want it ripping your nice gig shirt. Gigging shirt. It's just no fun to play on that. It hurts you. You could cut your hand almost. You could just about cut your hand on this. Lawsuit. One. It's pretty bad. It's been pretty dry around here. As you can attest to with your cracked top acoustic. Yeah. It's been dry in our neighborhood. Yeah. And I don't think it's ever been done on this guitar. I don't think anyone's really worked on this guitar. It's got a little bit of player wear. It's got some, I think most of the player wear is from me playing on it. Yeah, you said you got it from a guy that, you know, was an expert on it or whatever. So maybe it was just something he had around. And he was at least as into them as I am, that's for sure. All right. His old lady was like, all right, you got to get rid of one of these. Or you can't have the one with the snake on it, right? <laughs> Thank you. The human teeth snake. Human teeth snake. I'm sorry, I just think that's the coolest thing. The snake guitar? With human teeth. With human teeth. Because the snake has human teeth in that graphic. Yes. That's the coolest thing. Uh, th yeah, that's... Whoever thought of a snake with human teeth on my favorite style of Kramer, right? Yeah. It's crazy. <coughs> who, I don't remember who the guitar player is, though. I, that, that invented that. I'm sure he's very good. I can't remember his name either. But, you know, you don't get it with, with a snake on it. With human teeth. Who doesn't want that? <laughs> Who doesn't want that? <laughs> and the snake has human teeth? Yes, that's the whole that's deal. The whole cool Everybody has a guitar it. with a snake on it, Randy. Everybody has a guitar with a snake on but it. But it has human teeth. It doesn't have, like, a... Fangs like a snake. Doesn't have like fangs. Like yeah, so fangs. it's less menacing. It's just like <laughs> It's like a, a Groucho Marx snake. A Groucho snake. <laughs> Groucho the snake. 
And then there was another one, right? The kind of the explorer style body thing that uh, that, that had the lightning on it. That one was pretty cool. That was the uh, Tracy Guns, I think. Tracy Guns guitar. That's the gut one I want. That one's pretty that cool. Guitar is, that's pretty badass wow. too. That's totally a badass one. Not hating on that. That's the one with the glue in as well. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to get a special case for that. But I'm sure that comes with a case, right? If you buy the Tracy guns. It must. It must come with a case. It might come with a pistol. It might come with a, <laughs> a, a little 22 <laughs> pistol. The Tracy guns with pistol. It's quite the accessory as far as case candy goes, right? Yeah. This, this guitar comes with a pistol. And the pistol does something. It's like an Allen wrench that helps you with the tremolo or something. You know what I mean? It's some kind of guitar related. It doesn't murder people. It doesn't murder people. It just helps you change your strings. <laughs> something like that. This episode brought to you by L.A. Guns. <laughs> the baddest rock and roll band in L.A. I like the way you like to claim sponsors. That I do. Have. What? L.A. Guns would totally sponsor this episode. This uh, episode brought to you by Tartan <laughs> 5142 masking tape. <laughs> Actually, I didn't go to Home Depot. I was like a good little you know, community person today, and I went to the local hardware store. There you go. I went to Cove Brothers on there 7th you go. Avenue and 21st Street. When Randy Steffes show supports local businesses. I support local businesses, I do. They're just so cool there. Just, instead of like going and getting lost up and down aisles, I walk in and I go, I need like some good masking tape and some super glue. And they're like, here, let me get that for you. It's pretty cool. All right. Getting to the scary but stuff. But this is New York. Not everybody has the luxury Getting to scary stuff. of going to the the local, you know? Some people <coughs> in Omaha. True enough. Getting to scary stuff. Uh oh. What? Got a file out. And sandpaper, is that what that is? File. I got some sandpaper. Alright, you can talk us through this, please. This looks dangerous. I just Starting to take the paper off. Just starting to take the paper off. Here's where, you know, let's see how brave I am. Let's just see. That's just a normal freaking file. Yeah, look at that. Look at that again. It's Can I look at the file again, me. please? That's the file I'm using. You don't know what grit it is? You know, like, what people used to do before you could go buy tools for Luthery is they'd buy a, a file like this, and they'd cut the handle off and the tip off make it all nice and flat and then that would be your fret working file yeah. we're working on frets but we're not doing that kind oh, of fret work yeah. we're not doing any leveling i'm just gonna get rid of the nasty little edges so but that's a wood file it's a metal file this is a metal file you don't know anything about this i'm gonna keep it your viewers and me and just keep it kind of How much pressure are you putting on that? As little as I can. I don't really care too much. Cutting level, you can feel already. Feel that side. I didn't do that. Uh huh. It's getting feel there. That it's side. getting there. It's getting there. So yeah, just gonna keep going on that. I don't want to be rounding the. F this is my yeah. All I want to do is like keep this as perpendicular, perpendicular, right angle to the top of the fretboard as I can. Just right angle to it up and down it and take that stuff off 
It's on the edge. It's nerve wracking. It's making me really nervous watching you do this. Super nerve wracking. Really just slow, 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 slow and easy. I kind of like holding it like this better. I get a better, get a better grip on her. I'm going to put tape on, it's just going to kind of stop, you know. I would never do this to my own guitar. I would, uh... That's a little scary, isn't it? I would watch videos of other people doing it, but I would never try this myself. Never, ever. Well, you need some extra tools to do this that maybe not everybody has laying about, you know? I like that much better already. I want to check out... It's going to be a little rough. We're going to clean that up a little later. But, yeah. I'm going to use, uh... This wet-dry sandpaper here. What's the grid on that? Got some 420. We got some 320. 320, 420. What is it? It's got some 320 here. I'm just gonna kiss it with this a little bit. We should have put a disclaimer on this episode. Warning. Warning. Destroying vintage you Kramers. You could destroy your own guitar trying to... You can definitely... Do not try this at home. Have some confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I that worked just great. Or what, disclaimer. Only do this on your own guitar. Don't do it on <laughs> someone else's. Well, you know, <laughs> maybe you want to pay a professional. Maybe you want to pay a professional to do this. Now you're repeating the process? Now we're doing the other side. Yeah. yeah. That's all we're going to do. Oh, the see, you hear the sound of it. Just the sound this of makes it. you nervous. <laughs> it's a scary sound. as much as patience, you know. Yeah, this makes me feel uncomfortable. Like, you know, like if you're not a doctor, you don't want to go to see the surgery or whatever. It makes you nervous. There's a reason when you take your stuff to the repair guy that they don't do it in front of you. <laughs> <clears throat> Not everybody can take seeing this. No, yeah. It's very disturbing in a way. It's pretty disturbing in a way. Okay. Busting through masking tape, peeled it off. But you can see how fresh that is. It's pretty flat. And if I hit this rosewood a bit, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna sand it a little and polish it a little and it's gonna come back pretty good. Now if you got the that uh, maple neck like the Stratocasters have sometimes. Mine doesn't. Have a, the mistreater doesn't, right? That, it's got a maple. Is it maple? Yeah, it's maple. Yeah, I don't even remember. When I polished that I had to use different stuff than when I polished this. Because of the finish on that. What is Yutaka? Yutaka is, has the one, uh, the rosewood. Is, what's his? Or is his maple too? I thought his is a rosewood fretboard. Yutaka. Yeah, somebody, Yutaka. somebody's got the dark wood. Stratocaster. I got Kramer's in both flavors. I'm gonna go to this 400. Why'd you switch? Sandpapers. 
I'm just lighter paper, finer paper, 400 paper now. all gone. Still got a bunch of tape here. And yeah, we're coming along nicely. This is insane. I didn't know we were getting this much into stuff today. You didn't, didn't know that. that. Are you didn't tell you? No, yeah. This is my first fret file ever. I got that when I was like 18 years old, tips broken off of it. It's an old triangle file. And the guy that gave it to me gave it to me and was like, kid, here's what you need to work on guitars. And it's all smooth on the corners that he had to do with a grinder at home. What do you mean? Let me look at that. Hold on. This is like the old school fret working file. Did everything with this, crown it and stuff. Before it broke, it had a really fine tip and it was really good for doing this really fine work I got to do now, kind of smoothing out that stuff. All right, so you gotta know a guy to get one of those. <laughs> well, you got he had to make that. I got a birthday present though. I got this. This tiny little file for doing fret work. Is it also triangular shape? No. It's just flat. You can't really tell. This was on specifically the made for the job I'm gonna do right now. Right. It's got. Where do you get one of those? This one came from a company called uh, Lee Valley in Canada. My wife got it for me for my birthday. Oh. So it's round. You might know her. She's a taped previous episodes. She's Our taped Jill. previous episodes. Yes. And so it's got flat ends that don't have teeth, and it's only got teeth on like this side and that side. And I believe they even sell it as it's for doing this exact job I'm about to do. And I'm going to have to do this job 21 frets times 2, 42 times. And the job I'm going to do now is I'm just going to round over the sharp edge I just made. So, flat yeah. edge. Something's going on with the, the light. Having some lighting issues? Yeah. Okay. It's tough stuff to show, right? Let me try to get in here. Hard to see. So there you go. I'm just going in there real gently. I'm just rounding over the sharp kind of edge I just made. Might have to, on some of these, you know, just kind of. Down, still. Start talking quietly, doing this really small stuff. Yeah, I'm nervous for you. We're all we're all nervous. I'm just gonna use my thumb as a guide here, and just sort of go over that. And you're not putting much pressure on there. No, are you? no. Let the file do the job it's supposed to do. This is dangerous. I don't like this. I don't like any of this. You don't like any of this? I don't. It's dangerous stuff, isn't it's it? It's nerve wracking. It's totally nerve wracking. On this vintage Kramer guitar. It's super nerve wracking. See, I'm, I'm nicking it a little bit here and there. Not much, just a little bit. But yeah, just gonna take the first bit of the roughness out of it like this. One at a time. This is this is where this video is now the most boring video anyone ever saw. Back and forth, back and forth. Well not everything can be, you know. Not everything not can be everything super can be exciting. J.J. Abrams, you know? Yeah. Randy. Not everything can be J.J. Abrams. Did you see that movie Miami Vice? 
that he did. He remade Miami Vice. No, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's, don't see it. It's don't see it. Not this episode. Not brought to you. Not brought to you by Miami by Vice. Miami re, me, remake. Of, now Don Johnson is one thing. This is more like a f do it by feel kind of thing than anything. It really is. Especially with my eyesight. Let's say this was the first time you ever did this. You should maybe like go and find like a like a cheap, you know, ten dollar guitar from an antique shop and just start messing around with it. Yeah, Probably hell yeah. Way to go. Hell yeah. That's what you do. You know. That's how you learn. Before you get into your vintage Kramers. Before you get into your vintage Kramers. You should probably like, you know. Go get, you go wrecking your go get an old harmony or something and start yeah. filing around on it. And yeah. You, you never know. Maybe I you, think so. Maybe you find a way you like it better. You know? Who knows? Just watch a thousand videos. That's why I'm making this, is so you can watch a thousand videos. A lot of the videos I've watched, I like watching videos about people doing guitar repair. That's why I thought I might try my hand at making them. A lot of the videos I watch, they like fast forward through stuff and they show stuff in double time and I don't know, maybe that's good, maybe, you know, that's all you need, but I figure everyone's got pretty easy access to the fast forward button on YouTube. Well, I'm noticing that you start not following your own rules sometimes as you go along. Yeah, you should point that out to me. <laughs> what did I do wrong? You're supposed to follow your thumb. Your thumb's way over on another fret. Yeah, I'm just, I, I need it to, <laughs> I, I need it to hold the, the piece that I'm working on. No, I don't have a shop, I don't have any vices and stuff. I can also kind of feel how much pressure I'm putting on like that. Just move it where I want it to move to. That thumb thing works pretty good for just like, I want to knock that. There we go. Just that that, tiny bit that's down probably there. the way to do it. And then I gotta do the rounding part. Doesn't take much, man. Getting quicker at it, I think. I feel like I'm getting quicker at it. It's like that show, did you ever watch that show on the, you know, PBS? The the guy that had the, the wood shop. The wood right shop? Yeah. yeah. And he'd make chairs and stuff, make it look like real easy. I love that show. Yeah. But that guy had like every tool imaginable. He did. He every, did. He had everything. Every... And, he had every, and, and he's like a mathematical genius. Mm -hmm. of sorts he can just like sort of look at stuff and know oh well I need to get this it has to be this circumference just gonna eyeball it he'd make some crazy stuff too you remember like man oh yeah like I'm gonna make a whole chest of drawers in 30 minutes and he would do great job <laughs> yeah <laughs> whatever happened to that stuff PBS still have the Woodwright shop? No, I mean, whatever happened to the stuff he made? Who got it? What happened to it? It's in the Smithsonian or something? Someone got it. Someone's got Bob Ross's paintings. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Like, what happens to all the pe cool ass PBS stuff that people make real quick? It's non profit, right? So maybe they uh, auction it off. Maybe if you go to a PBS auction and support your local uh, channel, <laughs> you can buy yourself a Bob Ross. Maybe you can. I'm definitely getting a little faster at this. My hand's feeling a little more confident. In it. And I've definitely probably got some touch-ups to do, but this isn't the last step. And if you're going to get that tool, you should get it from a 
Where? What? Say that again. Where do you get this stuff? Do you get it from like metal working places or from guitar working places? This tool came from a place that sells woodworking tools. Oh, so that's a, okay. That's good to but know. But they have a big section of like specifically for musical instrument woodworking tools. Oh. Some company in Japan makes these cool files for working on guitars. So those are other cool files that I got for, for my birthday. So PBS guy would probably have all these files in his shop, just in case. He right. was building guitars, I bet he was. Well, you said it's like a woodworking thing, so I imagine him being a master. I guess there's lots of hobbies when you might need something like this. Like making airplane models and stuff? <laughs> Working on small things. <laughs> <laughs> repairing clocks <laughs> jewelry people they have all kinds of cool small tools yep back and forth back and forth You're not really going back though, you're only going forward. I am only going forward. I'm just kind of doing this sort of rounding. I just want to take that sharp edge and make it round. That's it. Why'd you choose to get into this guitar instead of all of the billion others? Instead of all the other projects, <laughs> all the other project yeah. guitars. Yeah, what made you decide, you know, um, we're going to work this one? I really like this one. I just love this guitar. I like them all. I love them all. You're going to start playing this bad boy? I want to play this one. Basically, you know, I bought all these guitars and now they're all broken because I just kept going from, well, this one's broken. This one, the, the tremolo arm is loose so instead of like taking 30 seconds and right fixing it I'll like, well, this other guitar yeah i have five million other goes to the other case and or i'll be to the back of the pile the back of the rotation and rots and you know you got to do all this stuff or i have five million kramers and i'm just going to play the strat anyway i got five million kramers and i'm just going to play my strat <laughs> Or my Paul Reed Smith guitar. <laughs> yeah, I like that little thing. Yeah. This one just seems sticking out more than the other ones. Is it an expensive model, Paul Reed Smith, that you have? Or is it cheap? I mean... I think it's the most inexpensive USA is it? one that they ever made. It's the favorite one I've ever played in my life. It's a Mira. Paul Reed Smith Mira. Very simple one. I love it. It's a great guitar. Not the one Santana plays. It's not the Santana model. <laughs> it's definitely not the Santana model. Santana would like it though. He wouldn't have a problem with it. I don't think so. Santana would love it. You think Santana can do all this stuff? On his own guitar? No, Santana. Oh, I doubt it. Santana's probably got a guy on call. <laughs> it's like his guy. I couldn't see Santana, you know, doing any of this. I think he'd do like more like what you did. Oh, it's broke. I'm just going to grab this. I'll other. just grab the next guitar. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more Santana-like. does sound more Santana like doesn't it all about feel all about feel
close up to that. Yeah, I'm gonna try. I think I'm pushing too hard. I gotta lighten up my technique a little. This is about patience. If you don't have patience, maybe you should pay someone to do this. <laughs> I'm just tired of paying people to do this, to tell you the truth. I know how to do it, so I should stop being so lazy about it. And, you know, I'll pay the guy once I screw it up. <laughs> Fix it for me. Right. <laughs> nah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> See how far I can get on my own before... Oops. That's what I'm saying. Oops happens, man. I want to maybe get you talked into... Just clamping that Gibson together and going for it. Yeah. Should we or should we not attempt to repair that? I don't know. People can leave comments. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to see me attempt In your to, to below. fix a crack <laughs> on Johnny's very expensive, fairly new Gibson acoustic guitar? But it's not like I'm not just going to break it again, you know? <laughs> I think this is going to take a little more effort. I think I'm chewing on that one a little too much now. We need to do a series on if your guitar is constantly broken, it's probably you, right? <laughs> Remember, you're just telling me. People uh, at home need to know that. People at home, they if need to know. Your guitar is just constantly broken. Maybe you're not treating maybe, it right. Yeah, maybe you're not, you know, maybe you're dropping it in the park and everything else. <laughs> Knocking it against the, the table in front of you. That was hilarious when you were telling me how, like, that's the guitar you take care of, and then you just bang Bam, it into the table, yeah, yeah. and then embarrassed by that, you dropped it on the floor, <laughs> kind of, hard. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean to. I'm not trying to make a spectacle of it. Mm -hmm. Some people are just hard on things, you know? Some people are just hard on things. Willie Nelson's guitar has a big old hole in it. Trigger. There's great video on YouTube of a guy uh, fixing Trigger. I think I actually have a sticker on my case from that shop that fixed Trigger. What was he fixing? Was he able to fix it? Oh yeah, he fixed Trigger. What was the issue? Everything. <laughs> Everything. You would say Willie Nelson's hard on guitar? I think he just, you know, spent... Yeah, he's kind of hard on that guitar, you have to say. It's like missing a lot of wood, that guitar. <laughs> Probably never playing this fret much in this position, but you never know. But what if you end up selling it to uh, Zach Wild or something? Or Zach Wild. Or Steve Vai, he gets up there. Needs it. Yeah, these guys that have endorsements from major companies that build guitars, what they need is a vintage Kramer Pacer. You'd be surprised. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not the only fan of the Kramers. I love them, but there's more than one of us out there loving the Kramers. Crazy guns. Well, that's a good start there anyways. All right, man. We're gonna have to take. Uh, I'm gonna take five at this yeah, point. We're about an hour. Before we we're about an hour in, yeah. man. We're. I mean, about we're, time to take a break. We're about man. to be making the Ten Commandments. All right. All right, Randy. So. So we'll be back soon with uh, the next episode where I do the treble sign. All right, rock and roll. Rock and roll.